let's get into the other component, which is this triangle here. So I have this broken into some segments to give you an idea of where to pick colors from, because when you're going to pick highlights and shadows, or specific colors for specific shading, you're going to want to pick from certain areas in this triangle. It's not just a hunt randomly for a color. That's not the best way to pick color. You, you want to have some educated guess as to where to go and then refine that. So we have our vertical value axis, then we have our horizontal saturation axis. And the way I like to shade, as I mentioned before, is I like to be really specific about how I tweak my colors and I like to kind of shift things in a way to make them just pop more. So I'll give you an example here. Let's do a red sphere, something like this. So this is our base color. So if we want to shade something, the colors that we're going to pick are obviously not going to be anything bright because it's going to be a shadow. So it's definitely going to fall somewhere below the line of the midtone. The midtone is just the general middle color. So that's kind of what I picked. It's right around here. So this is about where we're at right now. So if I'm going to shade it, I have to go below this point on the triangle. Anywhere below this point is going to produce a darker color. Now, whether I pick from the left or the right is going to dictate how bright that shadow is going to be or how dull it's going to be. And generally, I make my shadows duller because there's kind of less light going on there. The intensity of the light being diminished kind of makes it look more dark and more natural. If you'll notice, like at night, if you're walking around, things really aren't that bright. They're kind of all washed out and kind of one color. And when you're out during the day, everything really pops. Everything's really bright and really saturated. So if I pick pretty much any color from here on down, I'm going to get a good result for my shading. If I pick something that's more saturated, more towards the saturation side, and I do my shading, then I'm going to get a shadow kind of like that. And if I want to do a really bright highlight from the mid-tone up, it's going to produce a highlight. So for this example, I'm going to shade going from kind of over here with some of these more dull colors. So I'm going to pick kind of a gray, dark red for my shadow, and then my highlight, I'm going to pick something kind of like this dull pink over here. So you can see the difference between these two examples now. We've got our bright one here, and we've got our dull one here. What makes the difference is that in this top example, I picked colors that were more over on this side, and in this example here, I picked colors that were more over here. When you pick colors and you want them to be bright, there's this curve that kind of starts to happen that goes something like this. I'll kind of show you how this works. So I'm going to take my color sampler tool, and when I hover over some colors and sample, my color picker here is going to move around in my color wheel and serve my slider bar. So I want you to watch where these values are on the HSV sliders, and I also want you to watch where this little target goes. So I'm going to sample down here and you can see if I start to move around the target starts to move and you can see it's following a curve right that same curve that I described earlier that's this curve here so this is kind of the saturation curve if you want something to be really bright you're gonna to want to pick your highlights up here and you're gonna to want to follow this line this diagonal line here and the further in you go towards this saturation point, the more intense the color is going to be. And then, of course, you want to follow the opposite diagonal line back down. If you stay in the center and you don't go into this curve, something like this, where it's really shallow, your color is going to be really dull. And I'll show you an example of that. And then I'm going to sample over it. And then again, watch what's going on here with all of these settings. See how shallow this curve is here, if you're watching the target up here? It's only really going in these colors here, so this shading is going to be duller. Now, up here, if you watch that target again, over here, the curve is a lot deeper. It goes in further, like in this example. So, when you're picking colors, you want to follow this chart. And this kind of gives you some different descriptions of different categories of midtones and shadows and intensity and highlights. So those are your saturation curves. This, again, kind of just cuts out some of the extra stuff, because I know that can be kind of confusing seeing all those labels. If I'm going to pick highlights, they're generally in this range here that's highlighted. And if I'm picking shadows, they're usually over here. Now that'll change a little bit. Sometimes my shadows might be here, and you know, sometimes I might pick highlights from over here. Nevertheless, this is going to be your midpoint where all your midtones are, and then your highlights are going to be up here, and your shadows are going to be down here. It's pretty easy. And again, with saturation, if you want something to be really, really bright and really pop and be very vivid, 
you're going to want to pick colors that are in this range here. And again, if I sample colors here, you can kind of see, watch how it goes. It's following that curve, that same curve that I have illustrated here. When you're picking colors, you don't really want to just pick colors at random. It makes it a lot easier if you know why you're picking colors, then you don't have to guess. You know what to pick. If you want to pick shadow, you know where to get your shadows from. If you want to pick a highlight, you know where to get your highlights from, and you know how to dull them and make them more gray or to make them really bright. So that's pretty much all you need to know about picking colors. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to click the subscribe button below to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.